What's up guys, it's Mr. Myosis here and I am here to talk to you about one sample proportion hypothesis test. And this is part two. Um, in the last video I talked about just kind of how do we get the, um, how do we write the hypothesis, what all the terms were. Um, and in this one I'm gonna actually do uh, an entire hypothesis test from uh, from the start of the, the, the problem all the way to the end in our conclusion, okay? So um, this is continuing with the same idea that we had last time in terms of uh, Mission Texas being called the fattest city in America and really how, um, how overweight are their people. So um, here is, oops, here's our question that we had. Is it that bad? Oh, I'm going to pause this for just a second. All right, sorry, I just had to move the screen around here so we got a better view of the screen. So uh, suppose we take a random sample of 1,000 residents of Mission, Texas, and according to the study, 38.5% of those are overweight. Is there evidence that, the, that in Mission, Texas, obesity issue is significantly larger than the national average? So let's take a look real quick at what I went over uh, before in terms of uh, our steps for a hypothesis test. So the first thing we're going to do is write our null and alternative hypothesis. Then we're going to identify our conditions. We're going to do our mechanics. So in that section is uh, where we're going to find our z-score. We're going to find our standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Uh, we're going to do all that work so that we can get the probability that this sample proportion happens simply by chance, which we call the p-value. So if the null were true, what's the probability that this um, sample would, would happen um, just simply by you know by happenstance and then finally we're gonna we're gonna use our conclude we're gonna write our conclusions based on our p-value where they're gonna reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis all right so um, let's go back to our question here let's go back to our problem here uh, is it that bad in Mission Texas so we um, we there was a question that my students had in my class that uh, how do we know that we're doing a a, uh, a hypothesis test. Well, there's some key words in here that tells you, look, I got to do a hypothesis test. Now, the two key words that, that I always notice uh, when I see these is evidence. So if we're looking for evidence, we're trying to prove something, right? We're trying to, um, we're trying to show that something is true. This is when we do a hypothesis test. So this is a key. Um, when you see the word evidence, if you're asking, is there evidence, then right away you think, I got to do a hypothesis test. The other one is significantly larger. Now, for something to be statistically significant, it must pass a hypothesis test, and the p-value must be less than the alpha level, which I'll talk about real quickly in, in just a second when I get to it. So um, those two words right there tell me that, yes, I'm going to, in fact, have to do a hypothesis test. I know this is a proportion hypothesis test because I'm using percentages all right so uh, let me first do the first thing I need to do is establish my hypotheses okay so my null hypothesis is going to be that the proportion P of people in overweight people in Mission Tech or sorry the proportion of overweight people in Mission Texas is equal to the overall the the true proportion which is 0.357 all right on the side here I, I want to make sure I have some context so P is the uh, proportion of overweight uh, people in Mission Texas all right so what we're trying to say is okay so the null hypothesis is well okay there is no difference. There's no real difference. The the people in Mission, Texas are just like everyone else. Okay, P equals 0.357. Where the alternative is, yeah, you know what? There's a problem. In fact, their their percentage is is bigger. 38.5. Bigger, no pun intended. Um <laughs> their their uh problem of, of of people, their percentage of people that are overweight is going to be larger than the national average, which is kind of what we're trying to prove. So this null hype this alternative hypothesis, normally what we're trying to show is is uh what we're trying to find the evidence for. Okay. So these are my hypotheses. Now let me write my so that's step one. Step two is my conditions. All right, I have to be able to establish 
that I have conditions to use my normal model and do inference um, and to use the normal model for this. So the first condition is that uh, are my is my sample taken randomly? Yes, it says right here, random sample of a thousand residents. So when I, when I write this out, I want to make sure that I write it in context. So um, we have a random sample of 1,000 residents in Mission, Texas. Okay. I might, you might see me abbreviate here just because that's just, I don't have a lot of time on this video and I want to make sure it's, you know, less than 15 minutes. Um, the second case, so the first case is that we have random. So the second condition is that uh, we have less than 10% or that the individuals are uh, independent of one another. And clearly our random sample of a thousand residents, they're going to be independent. We didn't pick the same people twice. Um, we can also establish that by saying, you know, uh, 1,000 residents is less than 10% of all residents in Mission, Texas. And I'm pretty sure that Mission, Texas is, um, you know, bigger, bigger than that. Uh, finally, we need to know that our number of successes and number of failures are greater, are going to be greater than 10. Now, that's the number of expected Okay, not, not what we actually have, but what we expect to have if the null were true. Remember, we're doing this whole thing saying, if the null were true, what is all going to happen? So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take 35.7% of 1,000, right, which is 357. So 357 successes is definitely greater than or equal to 10. Um, and then six, let me do some quick math here. We got 643 non-successes. I'll just call them failures. Which, you know, if they're not overweight, it's not really a failure, right? <laughs> so that's also greater than 10. So we have um, success failure condition. So our null hypothesis is, and our alternative hypothesis is done. Our conditions are done. Now we can really get to the work and the mechanics of the situation. So I'm going to get take a blank page for this. So just remember, this is what we started with. Okay, um, I'll probably I'll rewrite this on the next page so we at least have our null and alternative. But um, we've already gone through the conditions, so you won't see that on the next page. All right, so here I go. I've got. Um, need to get red here so one second all right I just wrote everything down so you can see all of the stuff that needs to go in your hypothesis test. so uh, we're gonna go and do our mechanics here so we've got uh, we need p hat all right so let's just mark down a couple things that we have we have p hat which was 0 0.3 uh, let me go back to see what that was that was 38.5 percent that's what we got in our sample okay so we've got p hat, we've got n, which is a thousand, and we're going to do a sam. We're going to find a z score for our sampling distribution. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, we need to find the standard deviation of p hat. If you recall, that's the square root of p q over n. That's in a different video, right? Um, so we're going to have 0 0.357 times 0 0.6 four three over one thousand and p is point that's from my null hypothesis so that's p q is obviously it's one minus p and then it's divided by a thousand square root so i'm going to do that in my calculator very quickly and then come back All right that gives me 0 0.015 and to find my z score it's going to be p hat minus p over the standard deviation of p hat so I have p hat, which is 0 0.0385 minus p, which was 0 0.357 divided by my standard deviation that I just found. And that's going to give me my z-score, which is going to be 1.87. You saw my calculator work right there. So now what, what? let's visualize what's going on here. We're looking for, again, we're doing a sampling distribution. Our alternative hypothesis is greater than so we're looking for the probability that our sample is greater than the the null um, if the null were true okay so um, here's um, here's zero 1.87 is going to be around right here 
Okay, I'm just drawing a picture so we can see what's going on. And then we're doing all of this area here, right? That's the probability that this happens if the null were true. So another way to write that is P, the probability that Z is greater than 1.87. All right, so we're gonna go and put that in our calculator. And the way we do that is we use normal CDF. You can also use a table, but I'm gonna go and use normal CDF. Okay, so menu, um, probability, distributions, normal CDF. Uh, my lower bound here is 1.87. It's always helpful to draw the picture because uh, if I draw the picture, then it lets me see what was my lower and upper bound. All right, so then we're gonna hit okay. We get 0 0.03, 0 0.0307. So what this is saying is that now this right here, this is called my p-value. What this is saying is that if, if the null were true, then we would see the, pr the probability that we would see this sample simply occurring just by chance is going to be 3%. You know, 3%, that's pretty low, right? That's kind of, that's kind of, of, of odd, right? That's, that's a little bit, that's a little bit weird that that happens. Now, what we're going to do though is, is, is we have to compare, compare that to what statisticians call the alpha level. And our alpha level is based on um, how far away from the uh, mean we are. So it really is based on standard deviations. And the alpha level is kind of like, like the percentage or the height. Um, the furthest, let's say it's, it's, the, it's the lowest your percent, the lowest your p-value could be to not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so... Um, so let's, most of the time, if it doesn't say in the problem, then you're gonna use an alpha level of uh, 0.05. So we're gonna, we're gonna consider this an alpha level. We write it like this, alpha level of 0.05. So basically what I'm saying is that if this p-value is smaller than this alpha level, so this probability is smaller than this, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis and say, yes, we in fact have enough evidence that the alternative hypothesis is true. If the p-value is bigger than this alpha level, like if this p-value had been 0 0.10, then it's bigger than this, like, this, this line that says, no, 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 you can't go any further than this. So it's bigger, it's bigger than this alpha level, then we would say we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we don't have enough evidence to show that the alternative is true. So we just, you know, we're not gonna accept the null, we're just gonna say, well, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have to fail to reject it and, and there's really not enough evidence to show otherwise, okay? So here's what we do, we're gonna, we're gonna make our, um, our conclusion now based on our p-value that we just got, okay? So let's go and do that. All right, so here is our conclusion based on our p-value. All right, we're going to say um, since our p-value of 0 0.0307 is smaller. Now, I'm going to use caps here just so I can, you know, point to the things that are important here. Then an alpha level of... 0 0.05 now that's any you know that's what we're going to say it is just because we don't have one um we will reject the null hypothesis now just real quick um this right here that i just wrote is just is has no context to it right so uh, we have to show context in our conclusion. So we're going to write, there is, there is sufficient, there is, we'll just say evidence, evidence that the percentage of overweight people in Mission, Texas is significantly larger than the national average okay that is our context all right all right guys that is an entire um hypothesis test from the beginning to the end all right so i made my 15 minute mark we'll talk to you later good luck guys you got it